Welcome everyone, Larry Sparks here, and we are going through prophetic words for 2024. I've got one of my favorite people, a dear friend with me, Anna Werner, author of The Seer's Path, The Warrior's Dance, Seeing Me on the Veil, amazing books. But also what I love that you're doing, I just want to let the people know, Anna, is that you are practically training, mentoring, and really discipling a whole prophetic community. Um, mm -hmm. Where if people want to, because I actually, where I travel, it's so funny, Anna, where we do a lot of ministry together, but mm -hmm. I'm out traveling. People are like, oh, do you know Anna Werner? I'm part of her online community, I'm part of her school. Well, come on. I know, that's that's awesome. I'm like, well, you're part of something very good. But if people are interested in connecting with you for anything in the future, or if you have anything going on now, where's the best place for them to go? Yeah. So my website is my name, AnnaWerner.org. And you can check out, we have two different, I do two different types of mentorships. One specifically for seers, training on the gift of seeing, um, discernment, um, and deliverance ministry, as well as I do a mentorship that is coming up in the month of, it's going to be January through March. Um, uh, and it's a healing school. And I love, and we have many, many different guests coming into this upcoming healing school. So I love mentoring. Like that is my absolute heart is to mentor people, pour into students and mobilize really seers uh, internationally around the world. And so it's a, it's just a joy. And I love when I get to meet um, y'all in person. <laughs> it's so fun when someone shows up to my conference and says, you know, Hey, I did your, your seer mentorship back in April. And I just, it's very exciting. And I, I just, I just look forward to it every year. I look forward to the mentorships. I love it. Well, and when somebody tells me that, that they've been part of that, it gives me just a different perspective about that individual. And I can tell you this, most of the people that I meet who represent uh, your training, who have gone through, I'm like, these are solid, discipled people. And their desire is that, Anna. That's what I, that's what we, I love that. They desire to be trained, mentored, and discipled, which is so healthy in the prophetic world. Um, Speaking of the prophetic world, as we go into 2024, I wanted to ask you just for what do you sense? What do you see? What are you hearing the Holy Spirit say about the days that we are entering into? Because the reality is this. We know that prophecy often comes with an invitation. Holy Spirit reveals something, but then there's something for us to do, to pray, to partner, to take risks, to do something. But I wanted to throw it your way just for a few minutes while we have our friends watching. What what is the Holy Spirit saying or revealing to you about the days ahead? Um, well, thank you for this opportunity, Larry. What an honor. And um, I just want to say to you, those of you watching, every prophetic word, um, test it by the word. Go dig into the Bible. We have to test every prophetic word by this. We have to get into a Bible and say, does this match the character of God? So the things that I'm going to share with you are... Um, things that I have spent some time really processing um, with Holy Spirit before I share and release them. So um, 2024 is going to be a very exciting time. This is a season, I will say this, start off here, where we need intercessors that are mobilized right now, who carry the gift and wisdom of discernment in this season. Amen. Um, back in uh, back when Rosh Hashanah was going on, the Lord started showing me um, this vision of this upcoming year. And what I saw, and, and I want to say this, as someone who sees, the Lord often speaks to me through a vision and then confirms himself through the word. And I take it before the Lord and I ask him for revelation before I share that. So I was taken up in a vision and I saw this ice skater. Um, and I'm not good, a, a wonderful ice skater. I'll say that on a side note, but I saw this ice skater skating and I watched her and it was the most ungraceful, <laughs> it was the most ungraceful um, routine I have ever seen. Um, I saw her struggle. I saw her fall many times, but as she fell, she would get back up and pull herself back up. I saw her go and try and leap. And as she leaped and would spin, there was the fear I would see on her face of, is, am I going to be able even to land this? Is this going to work out? And sometimes she would land well, sometimes she wouldn't, but she would keep going on and keep getting back up. I watched this whole routine and finally she ended it. And I went, wow, that was the worst 
thing I've ever seen. That was messy. That was difficult. That was hard. And then the Lord said to me, I want to show you now from an aerial perspective, come look and come see. And he took me up in the vision and I was taken up from an aerial perspective and I looked down at the ice and the ice skater was still standing there at, you know, in the middle of the ice. But I saw that the ice skater had actually cut with her skates, this most beautiful, intricate pattern. And in the very center of this beautiful pattern, there was the line of Judah looking back. It was cut, the figure of the line of Judah roaring. And I went, oh, wow. And he said to me, Anna, 2024 is going to be a culmination of things coming together. So I want to speak to you. This past year, 2023, I believe many of us felt just as I thought that ice skater was a perfect representation of um, just immense hardship, immense season where you have had to persevere. You have had to pick yourself back up, even when you didn't feel like you could keep going on. You had to keep pressing into the Lord as you um, struggled and wrestled through some real situations that you were hit with. But in 2024, you are going to have the ability to stand back and have a different perspective. See, I was given the aerial perspective. He said, come look, come see. And I could see the whole thing from a different perspective. You're going to have the ability to stand back from the whew, that you've just walked through, that you're walking through perhaps right now, you're going to be able to stand back and actually see how also does this fit the body of Christ and also what God is doing on the earth right now. See, when you're in the mess of it all, when you're in the struggle of it all, sometimes you can only see what's just right in front of you. But to have the ability to stand back from a broader perspective, you're going to see how does this fit actually what God is trying to do across the earth. Hallelujah. So I hope that encourages some of you right now. You're going to, you know, be able to get a break from so much of the struggle. Things will come together now and fit. The second thing the Lord showed me. Oh, sorry. Should I just keep going, Larry? Or Just keep going. Just okay. Keep going. Yep. I'm just flowing because I don't know how much time I have. The second thing I want to say, um, the Lord spoke to me that 2024 will be a year of passing through a door. Now, I know a lot of people have spoken the word about a door. Um, and I, I just want to say this. Um, many have seen it said or spoken the word and it, of it being a door of opportunities. But the word that I really heard is it's a passing through the door. Passing um, is not passive. Okay, it it requires actually you to move and sometimes change. Change is the only way. I hope you hear me. Change is actually the only way forward right now. And so many being are being pressed. You're being pressed right now to make steps forward and make steps of change. I believe the Lord has already showed many of us blueprints of what to do, of what the change looks like, what we, how do we make the change. But we can't look backwards. It's, right now, we cannot look backwards in grief of what was once. It is the time to put your focus forward. And um, there's a scripture in Numbers 22, 20, I believe it's 26. I want to read that to you right now really quick. This is the part about um, Balaam and the donkey, which I love. And it says the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place, a uh, narrow place where there was no way to turn to the right hand or the left. OK, so when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she lay down under Balaam and Balaam was so angry. He struck the donkey with his stick. The Lord opened the mouth of the donkey. And she said to Balaam, what have I done to you that you have struck me three times? What I love about that is that. Just, I, I believe just as the Lord did with Balaam and his donkey, many, you're going to feel the pressing upon you in this season right now to change. The Lord, at, just as the Lord was behind the donkey and, and setting Balaam up for the direction he had to go, the Lord is behind. Hear me. I hope this brings clarity to some of us watching right now. The Lord is actually 
behind the process right now, the pressing that you personally are walking through to bring you into the place, to press you through the door into the next transition that you're going into. Many of us like the idea, and I myself love this, I just want to like float. I, I wish I was in a season of just floating through the door, but it, it is not that season. This is a pressing and passing through. The Lord's behind it. The good news is you'll get there. I want to speak to those of you who um, have just felt worn out by this season. I mean this from like the deepest part of my heart. The Lord spoke this word so clearly to me. Keep going. Keep going. Do not quit right now. Although you may feel totally worn out and exhausted by the process of what 2023 was, keep going. You will, you will get there. Lastly, um, I want to share with you this last thing. I had heard the phrase, possess the gates, possess the gates. It's time to possess the gates. And gates are about what we allow in and what we allow out. Um, right now in the season, we are season, I'm going to speak about this word is about the church. Right now, we need to mobilize people for one that carry the gift of discernment, as I mentioned before, the gift of the discernment that can intercede and actually stand on the wall and pray to possess the gates. The gates are so important right now in the spirit. We are in a season, hear me, when you're in a season of peace, you might pray differently. But that is not the season that we are in. And I'm not saying this to provide fear, put fear out there. I'm just saying this is a time to aggressively go after what is the word of the Lord right now? And how can I pray and intercede so that I can shift the atmosphere against the warfare that is coming, the warfare that is here, I want to say already. Amen. So. Church, we have to move out of a place of being passive to a stance that is clearly drawn right now. Part of possessing the gates is our stance has to be clearly drawn on certain issues that are even happening within the church. God is cleaning up the silliness that is happening, the silly, the silly things that perhaps in past seasons we could take time to um work through, and I'm not saying that God doesn't care about these things, but listen, come on church, please. We have to rise up now. We can't, we don't have time for petty things right now, petty arguments going on within church leadership, that sort of thing. This isn't that season. We have to get to a place where we are mobilizing intercession in this time to shift things. God is cleaning up. Hear me. God is cleaning up the church. He said, blessed are the pure of heart for they shall see God. So I believe the purity of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, the, the honest fear, genuine fear of the Lord and the righteousness of the Lord is going to be restored to the body of Christ in this year of 2024. And I am excited for it. And I want to encourage you right now. Would you be one that stands on the wall? Would you be one that prays? Would you be one like me who's, I, 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 I get before the Lord on my face. I go, God, show me. Show me how I can pray in this season so that these principalities our words not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. For real, you guys, we got to get real. There is real principalities that I want to come against. It's not me. This is in the name of Jesus. It's like, um, it, it, it's like I've got that fire in me right now. I think of David when he sees Goliath and he comes at him with his stones and he's like, it's in the name of my God, you know, and he gets that fire in him that he says, how dare you come against my people? I say, how dare the enemy right now come against the world? It's not America. This is the nations. God is after you. 
God is after, and I, I know it can get kind of broad when you think nations, okay, God is after you, God is after me, God is after our neighbors around us. Jesus, Jesus will be revealed in this hour, but we have got to pray right now. We really have to stand on the wall and say, okay, I really got to take it up a notch in, in, my, uh, in my prayers. And I, I just think, and I probably said this, sorry, I'm because I'm passionate, but in a season of peace, you pray differently than when you're in a season of war. And this is the time where we need the warriors who can pray, use the word of God, really use this thing, put it to work. It works. It really does. But use this thing and stand and say, no, no, not on my watch. I'm not going to allow the enemy to attack my family anymore. Come on. I'm not going to allow the enemy to strip down the very promise of God that the Lord has spoken over my life. Because it's not about your promise. Come okay? on. It's not my promise. It's not your promise. It is every single person that is affected by that prophetic word being put in and in coming into fruition. Because if that prophetic word is stopped, it shuts down perhaps a whole movement of God that is supposed to happen right now. Amen. That's our prophetic words. That's the power of prophecy is it's not, it, this is nothing to do with you and I, we have to get past this. This is not about you and I getting our prophetic words. This is about God himself, Yeshua being revealed on, in, in the nations. I was just going to say, I think you need to really pray into that. As soon as you were saying that, you know what I thought of? I thought of Hannah in the Bible. Hannah wanted a son. And for those of you who are watching, you might want a healing. You, you, you might need a financial breakthrough. I know one thing common on a right now is uh, prodigal children, children who have run away from the Lord. That, that might be something, I just want my son or daughter to come home. And that's wonderful. But I feel like what Anna is saying, it's bigger than that. Those things are so important to God. But do you know what happened when, Hannah, when, when, when Hannah got a son? When Hannah got Samuel, she didn't just receive a son. She received a prophet. Hannah gave birth to a prophet who literally changed times and seasons in the earth. And what Anna is saying right now, I really felt that Holy Spirit just highlight that story when you're talking about it's bigger than your prophetic word. It is. I feel like there's going to be a company of people. They'll get their breakthrough. They'll get their answer. But it'll be like a whole series of Samuels being released into the earth who carry grace power, authority to change times and seasons. But it is so true. It is so much bigger than just our breakthrough. So um, Anna, would you just pray into that? Because um, I feel like there's a lot of people that that's so relevant to. Just pray as you're directed. Absolutely. Father, I just, God, we just come before you, Lord, as your children. And we just thank you, Father. God, I thank you that you are, you are bigger. <laughs> I mean, I know that's a simple prayer, but God, you are bigger than any circumstance that is set before us in the natural right now. Lord, I pray that you would actually shift things in the atmosphere around us, surrounding us right now. God, I speak this word over someone you're watching this right now. I speak the word, Lord, release angels of protection that are around your children specifically the child, the prodigal son or daughter that you've been calling home, that you've been contending for for years to get on the narrow way, the straight path. God, I pray right now and I decree and I declare them unto you, Jesus, to come back to you, Father. Lord, I speak the word, the scripture that I heard was um, Psalms 63, in a dry and weary land where there is no water, thus I have seen you. So, Father, I speak to those who feel dry and weary, God. I pray the refreshing move of the Lord now to come upon you, that you will see God, that you will see Jesus as the loving Father. Sometimes you just need to know He loves you. God, I pray that right now, if you're watching this right now and you don't know the Lord, this might be even the first time you're hearing a prophetic word or you've walked so far from God and you haven't really felt a fresh touch from him right now. I just want to speak this over to you. The Lord absolutely desires to have intimate relationship with you. If you would just pray this prayer, God, please come into my life. 
I'm, I'm a sinner. I know I'm, I fall short from you, God, but I need you, Lord. Would you be the Lord of my life? God, I want to do life with you. God, would you give me direction right now in this season? In Jesus' name. And Father, I just thank you for whoever prayed that right now. And whoever you are also, I just I want to say this. Um, there's somebody you're receiving. You may not have prayed that because you might already know the Lord. But I heard the Lord saying, I'm releasing my miraculous power through this broadcast right now. So if you're needing healing in your body, just declare with me. Thank you, Jesus. By your stripes, I am healed. I am healed. Father, I thank you for your shalom peace now. The Lord has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound, disciplined mind. So I speak anyone that's experiencing fear right now, real deep measures of fear. I break the power now in the name of Jesus, of the spirit of fear. And I command you, come off them right now, right now. Right now, there it goes, in the name of Jesus. He is your Prince of Peace. He is, I have, I, trust me, I have been declaring this over and over. Jesus himself is our Prince of Peace. So you can have peace in any season. He can be your peace. Amen. 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 Anna, thank you so much for sharing that word. And again, for all of you who are watching, I believe the Holy Spirit had a word for you today. And I just want you to receive. If something was said today that really impacted you, I encourage you to share this. I encourage you, if you needed healing in your body, if it was you who, through this broadcast, came to know the Lord, let us know. Just share the testimony. Um, it's nice for me to see it more than anything. I just pray that you would share it with whomever that the Lord brings you into contact with. We must release the testimony of what he's doing, particularly in these times where there is, a, you know, I love that in Psalm 63, there is a dry and thirsty and weary land where there is no water. And yet, if you who are watching, you carry living water. You can't, living water lives inside of you through the Holy Spirit. You carry the solution that the world that is dry and thirsty needs. So, Anna. Thank you so much. Always enjoyed to have you on. And for all of our friends watching, we'll see you again real soon.